Hey, it's Tim Rhea here live at the Durango Film Festival. We are down here at one of the sponsors' parties with uh, Jared and Elizabeth with Esoterra Cider Works. Having an awesome time here, tasting some amazing ciders. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having, uh, having this event here. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much. I mean, bringing film, bringing a, essentially a world-class film festival to a town this size is really a brilliant thing. In my entire life, I've lived in major metropolitan cities, and there was one concern when we moved to uh, Durango of whether or not things like this existed. And yeah. so the richness and the beauty of what you guys are doing is awesome. And so, so this region has a deep, rich history, and I was... I was part of the Seattle uh, Wine Awards and the Cider Awards and stuff like that and learned a lot about the different stocks. It, it is really interesting DNA. You're the cider maker and I'm really curious to hear the story about your background and then the, the story of the region. Yeah, so we started Esoterra um, because uh, 10 years ago I moved to Dolores and I noticed all the old orchards in the area and all the apples falling and rotting to the ground. Uh, so I took it upon myself to see if anyone was doing anything with these apples. And, really? Yeah, and I met a couple who bought an orchard and wanted to start a hard cider company. And I uh, got their phone number, because you can do that in Montezuma County. You can... <laughs> yeah. They actually have phones <laughs> that do phone, up, phone, phone calling? You can ask around, like, hey, do you have their number? And then People someone will have it. it. And uh, they invited me over, and uh, we started making cider and learning how to make cider together. And and then and you then. fast forward and Jared and I met in graduate school yeah. and um, we spent a significant amount of time getting education we decided we didn't actually want to practice and Jared rolls over in bed one night and says if I started a cidery would you like want to be part of it and um, I was like I mean yeah let's do it this will be the fourth wave of all these amazing the uses for these amazing apples in this county yeah. so the history of the apples in the area is that in the 1880s People started moving here and um, homesteading, and part of the homestead uh, is they had to plant fruit trees. I believe it was like 40 fruit trees or something like that if, in order for them to get their, their property. And um, so, so we have, um, in the region, we have apple trees that are uh, 100 and almost 140 years old. They didn't cut them down during uh, prohibition. No, no, that's, that, that's, um, that seems to be a myth that they were actually cut down, that there's not much evidence that suggests that. Okay. Here, though, because we're so isolated, uh, there wasn't much commercial demand for a lot of the apples. And so uh, what happened in like areas like in um, north of here, like in Delta and Cedar Edge and stuff like that, they planted orchards around the same time, but then they kept uh, chopping down the tops and regrafting with commercial, um, popular commercial varieties. Yeah. But, but here in La Plata County, Montezuma County, that, that didn't happen as much and so so when you walk through these orchards in the 1880s you you'll maybe see 20 trees and 15 different varieties because that's how they planted it because apples they're they're so unique you can plant different varieties and they'll they'll ripen yeah. at different times uh, during the season so you have summer apples and early fall apples and late fall apples and so it's a it's a continuous food source from July into the winter like you could still be eating apples right now in march if you stored them properly and elizabeth you're going into the dna which was really interesting yeah so the cool thing about this region if you look at montezuma and la plata counties just alone there's like over 600 dna tested and like historically named apple varieties but on top of that there are thousands of additional types of apples what we call our varietals of apples and the reality is is so a, a, an apple seed is like wildly genetically different some people argue like 99 percent genetically different from the apple they come out of and so if you've got the wildlife as well as the human wildlife taking apples all over the place and planting. bears love them bears love them bears, nobody and the and the, the very interesting thing is is we're not the only species who enjoys apples after they have been fermented turkeys bears deer raccoons. elk raccoons they will wait for the apples to fall on the ground and ferment naturally yeah. and then they will eat the apples yeah. and so we like to think of ourselves a little bit like saving our natural habitat from the drunk turkeys that are inevitable <laughs> this fall dang drunk turkeys <laughs> cheers. cheers we'll do a quick round and so t tell me about um the shop here and then how do you go and process and come out with the final product. So we, we, we lease a building that used to be a historical juice factory. At, at one point in time, 
uh, the world's largest organic juice factory was located in Dolores, Colorado. And uh, we're literally up until 20 years ago. Like really? it's not been the in world's largest juice factory. Yeah. Is organic. organic, organic juice organic. factory. Yeah, the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So we're not reinventing the wheel here. This has yeah. been done before. There was yeah. a, there was a large juice factory so large that they had their own semi trucks that would start in San Diego, drop off glass bottles in Dolores. They'd fill up those semis and send it to Manhattan full of juice. So. Um, like a um, town that has always been 800 so, yeah, plus, yeah, give yeah, or take, yeah. people. Yeah. It's a gorgeous area, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody. Yeah. So, uh, so we, when we were looking for a place to produce, uh, the, the that building came up for rent, and so we started leasing it and started, uh, you know, doing what that building was designed to do, which is process apples and. Um, except we're just instead of making we still make juice, but we just take it a step further and yeah. ferment it out into What's the website so people can check it out and can they order can you ship or do you yeah? We can actually we can ship to most every state in the United States, states. 37 states um, And we you can pick up any bottles here tastes here uh, We have a tasting room in Dolores and in Durango and you can reach us at www.esoterracider.com E-S-O-T-E-R-R-A, cider.com. And then what's the location here of the retail? Here we are at the corner of College and Main at 558 uh, Main Avenue. Um, and then in Dolores, I mean, we're... We're the, on the east side of town. We're on the east side of town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big big building, town, build, big like building on the long. side of the river. <laughs> Right around 21st Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool area. I mean, like, real, like literally in the heart of yeah. ancient American yeah. civilization with Mesa Verde and everything. Yeah. Else right yeah, we actually because we we make a very different style of cider. Our style is very sort of a European style, very clean, very crisp, yeah. very dry. Not sugar. Not no sugar, no flavors. Our cider is apples, yeast, and a period of time. And the reality is, is we hand pick most of those apples. Like we are literally like Team Raccoon in the fall. We are up there hand picking yep. those apples ourselves. Yeah. And some of these apple trees are 130 years old. I mean, that, you know, you guys got a Paragon and a Kingston. The Paragon is 130 year old crab apple trees off the Florida River. We take great pride in the fact that we're trying to make a different kind of cider than is usually available to an American population. Yeah. Good story. I love it. Uh, well, we'll have to swing the camera down and come out to Dolores and, and, yeah. and, and uh, pick some apples. So thanks again for being on the show. Any, any last. Any last thoughts? Anything here? Thanks for being here. Yeah, this is an exciting group of people. We're happy to be here. Yeah, the filmmakers from around the world are here, and thank you too for hosting an awesome party and soiree. Thomas, thanks for running the camera today, and uh, thanks for Durango Film Festival for making it all happen. So, <laughs> and do come down to this region. It's an amazing region from Dolores. This whole southwestern slope of Colorado is the spot it's what yeah. people think of in their mind's yeah. eye when they think of colorado that's what durango still looks like a little bit west little carhartt little cashmere <laughs> <laughs>